Hello, everyone, and welcome to this session in which we would look at a series of recording that deals with the income statement. In the first recording, which is this one, we would look at the purpose and limitation. When you are looking at a financial statement like the income statement, you want to know the purpose. What is the need? What would the income statement contribute to the users? But also, it will have its own limitations. So we'll discuss the purpose and the limitation. In the next few sessions, we're going to look at the elements of the income statement. We're going to look at items called unusual and or frequent gains and losses. Then we would look at the discontinued operation. As an accounting student, as a CPA candidate, as a CMA candidate, you want to be very comfortable and very competent about the financial statement. What goes on them? What's the purpose of them? And how are they presented? Let's go ahead and start by discussing the purpose and limitations of the income statement. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. So let's start to discuss the purpose or use of the income statement. So what is the income statement? What's the purpose for it? Simply put, the income statement shows you whether the company is profitable or whether the company is operating at a loss. Now, bear in mind, the income statement would always give you old information, past information, because when you prepare the income statement, you are looking at something that already occur. So we're going to see how is that helpful? Because if something occurred in the past, how is that helpful in the future? We'll talk about that. Simply put, if we have more revenues than expenses, then we have a profit or net income. Now, within the income statement, we have elements other than revenues and expenses. We have gains and losses. We'll, we will discuss those next. But the point I'm trying to make here, revenues are exp and expenses are the main elements of an income statement. And we'll define those later, but simply put, revenues is how much the company is earning earning from their business expenses, it's the, it's the cost to operate the business. You want to keep your revenues greater than your expenses. So why is the income statement important if it's given us past information? Well, it's given us past information, but it's going to help us predict the future performance of the company. If I see for the sake of illustration that a company's revenue is growing for the past 10 years at 5%, I can predict in the absence of any changes, it's going to increase next year by 5%. So it will help us predict the future. Now, why is that important? Because that's what investors do. Investors and creditors, they want to evaluate the risk and uncertainty of the future cash flows. So how does net income translate into cash flows? This is what we do as a business. We want to generate profit and eventually that profit should be translated into cash. And this is why the income statement is important because it's going to help you determine your future. Help you. It doesn't mean it's for sure, but it's going to give you some information about the future because year over year performance, whether it's a profit or a loss, it's a good indicator. Obviously, you have to look at other things, but numbers are important. So that's why the income statement, it gives you this projection. It gives you this ability to help predict future cash receipts, risk, and certainty about those. And this is what we do as investors. We evaluate those and we place a price on the company, the price of the stock. Or in order to lend the company, we want to take a look at their future cash receipts. Now, the, the income statements has its own limitation. So what we talked about is the usefulness. What are some limitations on the income statement? The first thing is the income statement don't capture all the performance items. So in other words, there are certain items that we cannot measure that influence our revenues, influence our expenses, but it cannot be shown on the income statement. What are we talking about here? Think about 
starting with some accounting figures like unrealized holding gains and losses. Sometime we might have an investment and that investment could, could have went up in value or down in value, but we have not sold it yet. Well, we have unrealized holding gains and losses. That does not show on the income statement. That would show somewhere else. Maybe it doesn't show at all. For example, if we're looking at property, plant and equipment, property, plant and equipment are always shown at cost. Now, if we are looking at investments, at least the investments, we can capture those unrealized holding gains and losses and other comprehensive income on the balance sheet. But there are certain items that are unrealized gains and losses that they, they're not captured anywhere. Two, if the company's reputation is good, if the company's rep reputation is good, it means we should have a better ability to generate revenue. That does not show on the income statement. Good customer service department, good customer service reputation. That also does not show on the income statement. Other limitations for the income statements are different accounting methods are used by different companies. Not all companies use the same accounting method. For example, certain companies use FIFO for inventory and others use LIFO. So if you want to compare the performance of those two companies to make a judgment, you have to make certain adjustments because they're using different accounting method. And this could complicate things. For example, if you are uh, also the way they account for revenues, one company could be using the percentage of completion method versus another company using the completed contract method. Now, if you don't know what these are, don't worry. Those are different accounting methods to account for revenues and account for inventory. Why is that important? Because different accounting method will generate different amount of revenues and different amount of expenses. Therefore, the two companies, they might have the same figure, but they could be different. They could have different figures, but they could be the same. So you have to make adjustments. So the income statement by itself, you have to look at it. Then you have to look at the accounting methods that they are using. Also, in accounting, making estimates is inherent to this business. So the use of estimates and judgment influence a lot of figures on the income statement. Like when we estimate bad debt expense, that's an estimate. We estimate warranty, that's, that's going to generate warranty expense. We estimate depreciation. Depreciation figures are estimate. We estimate the life of the asset. We estimate its salvage value. So those are different estimates. And you're going to see later when we talk about the balance sheet, those are also limitations for the balance sheet because bad debt expense is connected to the allowance for doubtful account. Warranty expense is connected to warranty liability. Depreciation is connected to accumulated depreciation. The use of estimate is one of the limitations or weaknesses that accounting figures don't give us. That's why accounting figures don't give us the full pictures. We have to make a judgment. Remember? They're making a judgment, they're making an estimate. As users, we have to make an estimate, we have to make a judgment, and it gets a little bit tricky because what matters for us, us means users, investors and creditors, is something called the quality of earnings. The quality of earnings is how trustworthy are the numbers. Because different accounting methods, estimates, judgments are used, then we lose track of the quality of the earning. We really don't know how well these figures are, whether they are on the income statement or they are on the balance sheet. Also, given the fact that companies can estimate, make a judgment, use different accounting method, that's going to give management a room, management and options to do what? To smooth, to manage income, to meet Wall Street expectation or for management to earn their compensation package. So because we have those judgment and estimate that's giving management an incentive to manipulate the numbers and because of that then we question the quality of the earnings but bear in mind accounting irregularities are penalized heavily if a company cook their books or they manipulate the numbers once they are caught the stock price will suffer and once the stock price suffers once investors and creditors lose confidence in the numbers that's all what they have Usually they lose confidence permanently in quote means they no longer trust management. Why? Because the only thing that investors and creditors rely on are the accounting numbers. So once management manipulate those numbers, they're going to be penalized. If they want to borrow money, they're not going to be trusted. They're going to charge them a higher interest rate. Their stock price would always be sold at a discount. 
because whoever wants to buy it, they don't trust the numbers, they're, gonna, they're not going to pay enough for you. Simply put, investors and if investors and creditors cannot rely on the numbers, then the income statement becomes less predictive. Remember, one of the usefulness of the income statement is to help you predict future cash flow. If it's less predictive, then it's less useful. If it's less useful, if I want to deal with you, deal means make do business with your company if I'm lending you money I'm gonna ask for a premium if I'm buying your stock I'm gonna buy it at a discount as a result the investors will suffer the current investors will suffer and the the company will have to pay a higher cost of doing business whether in terms of interest expense or in terms of reputation reputation so how good how the reliable how reliable are the numbers are important given the fact management can use different accounting method different estimates different judgment so this is basically an introduction to the income statement introduction means what just gives you an overview about the usefulness usefulness means how good is the income statement and what is it used for it's used to make prediction but we also have to talk about the limitation of it and the quality of earnings. In the next session, what we would look at is the elements of the financial statement, the elements of specifically the income statement, because we want to see what, how, what is it composed of. We're going to look at a complete income statement. What should you do now? You want to go to Farhat Lectures, look at additional MCQs, additional resources, lectures that's going to help you, whether you are an intermediate accounting student, a CPA candidate, CMA candidate, or studying for professional development. Invest in yourself. FarhatLectures.com is always here to help and stay safe.